today we're going to be doing a long overdue Hermes unboxing. In fact, it's so long overdue that some of these pieces I've had since the holiday season. Now I wanted to wait because there were a couple of things that I was trying to exchange because I bought them in the wrong size and I was hoping that I would get them in sooner rather than later, but that hasn't happened and I don't want to wait any longer. So I'm going to show you the pieces in the wrong size and then whenever I get to exchange them, I'll let you know then. But I wanted to show you a couple of new things that I picked up from Hermes. I would love to update you on a piece from my wish list that did not work for me, but that doesn't mean it won't work for anyone else either. And I have also discovered a new fragrance, which I think is probably in my top three all-time favorite fragrances. It is right up my alley and I would love to share this with you because anytime I do a q and I always get a ton of questions on my call to fragrances and if you enjoy similar scents to what I do, you have to try this and even if you don't like this particular scent, this is a collection that you need to become familiar with. It's not a collection that I hear a lot of people talking about, which is probably because it's quite expensive, but at the end of the day, if you enjoy a beautiful, luxurious, intense fragrance, I think this is a recommendation that you will really enjoy. So without further ado, if you'd like to unbox my latest luxury purchases, mainly from Hermes, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. I am trying to think if we should start with the pieces that I already have or the pieces that I am not buying or the ones that I'm waiting to get exchanged. Maybe let's do the ones that I don't have here because the rest might take me a little bit longer to physically unbox. But the first thing that I wanted to share with you is a pair of loafers. Now, if you watched my 2024 luxury wishlist video, if you haven't, I will make sure to have it linked up here. You may remember that one of the pieces on my wishlist was a pair of loafers from the row which I haven't bought and there are a few reasons for that. Number one, I cannot find them in black. For this current season, I think these loafers are only being offered in olive green and dark brown, which I would consider the olive green version, but I really want to wear and use these loafers and I feel like I wouldn't get as much wear out of them in green as I would in black. I really don't have too many loafers and that is for a reason too. I was never into loafers because I used to never wear more baggy, relaxed fit pants. I almost exclusively wore skinny jeans and really, really fitted tailoring pants, which I really don't think go really well with loafers. But since I have been more open to exploring balloon shaped pants and pants that are a little bit more relaxed, I really feel the need to add some loafers to my collection. So long story short, because I don't have that many loafers, I would definitely I would love to add one to my collection that I would be able to wear on a regular basis. So I think black would be the best color to go for because it is my favorite color and I cannot find them in black in the right size at least. The second reason is that the rollovers have really become quite trendy and I'm trying not to buy trend oriented pieces. I don't know what it is, but when something becomes really overhyped and overdone, I just cannot justify spending the money on it. And then the third reason is that there is no boutique near me that sells shoes from the row. So I just really have not had a chance to go into a store and try them. So I have not bought the loafers from the row. Instead, I bought two pairs of shoes, two pairs of loafers from Hermes, one of which was, I think it's called the Gregor loafers, which are very different from the ones that I looked at from the row. These are a completely different style and they're also a little bit more in your face. They feature this really chunky, really cool sort of utilitarian sole. And then the loafer also has the iconic Constance H, which I actually do have the Paris loafers from Hermes already in black suede with a sole black hardware. These Gregor shoes come in a few different colors, but I was trying to hunt them down in black with a black on black hardware. So it would feature the sole black hardware. And then the sole has this kind of brownish hue to it. But what I didn't realize is that these shoes run huge. So I ended up getting them in a 41, which is already smaller than what I would normally go for. I used to be at least a 42, 42 and a half in RMS shoes. These days I have mainly been buying 
Air Mesh shoes in size 41, but these in 41 were so big that I kept stepping out of them. So I had to take them back. The reason I bought them in the first place is because my boutique didn't have them in the right size. So it was an online order that my boutique got for me. It got shipped to my house. I tried them on, they were too big. So I had to send them back. 40 was no longer available, which is kind of crazy that I'm buying shoes in size 40 from RMS because I haven't bought that size since I was a kid. But anyway, uh, 41 was too big. So we tried to get them in a 40. They were not available online. They tried to have them transferred from another store. Everyone kept declining the request until just a couple of days ago, the shoes came in and they got them in in the wrong size. So they said that at one point they will get them in a 40, but right now, there just doesn't seem to be one out there that they can get their hands on. They also offer them for women, by the way, but the women's version is slightly more narrow and they don't have them with the so black hardware, but they also do these very same shoes for women if you're interested. But the mess version starts at, I think they started at a size 39, which I feel like is almost a kit size. So Hermes definitely knows that these shoes run quite big. So as soon as I am able to get them in a size 40, I will and I will let you know. My boutique reserved one for me because they know that they are getting one. They just don't know when. So we'll see if I'm able to get them or not. But if I do, I will let you know. And if you are able to find them in a smaller size, definitely try them on. I think they are a really cool look. And I like the fact that the age is tone on tone. So it's not quite as obvious. I actually had to look and I think they are available in a size 40 on the French website. So if you live in France, it might be something that you're able to get your hands on. So instead, I bought another pair of loafers from Hermes, which these ones, sorry, let me get them really quick. So these I ended up ordering in a size 40 and a half, I think thinking that they're also going to run big. Well, these are way too small. So I think I would have to get these in a 41 and a half, maybe a size 42. And these, by the way, are a completely different style. These, I'm not gonna try to pronounce them. I'll leave the name up on the screen here, but let me get rid of the ribbon really quick and show you these shoes. So the other pair of shoes that I picked up, not instead of the Gregor loafers, but in addition to the Gregor loafers is these, which have, I mean, these are definitely on the chunky side, but they are not nearly as bold and as chunky as the Gregor loafers, but they also feature a slightly chunkier sole, which I think gives these shoes a more casual feel. They kind of remind me of the Duke loafers. If you're a longtime Hermes fan, you will remember the Duke loafers, which are one of the most classic style of loafers that Hermes offers. They offer it in two different styles. They have a narrow and a regular version, which I feel like is actually a lot more comparable to the one from the road that I was looking at, but I could not find them in a color that I liked. They do. They used to do them in every single color imaginable, but at this point, I don't think they are as popular as they used to be. So for this current season, they're only doing them, I think in like a chili red, not really a chili red, it's more of a muted, maybe like an ox blood red, which is just simply not my cup of tea. It's beautiful, but again, it's not a color that I feel like I would reach for. And in black, it's not avail available in a size that I feel like would suit me. But if you like a more traditional pair of loafers, the Duke you should also look at. And these are kind of a similar, these are kind of a take on the Duke loafers, except they are a little bit more modern and bold looking. So they feature this really nice, flexible, unbelievably lightweight sole. I mean, when I tell you that these shoes weigh nothing, I mean it because they are so unbelievably light. And then I like the fact that they came in this really nice, also really soft, surprisingly soft grain skin, which I feel like is most comparable to maybe something like Chanel's caviar leather. I really don't think there is another leather from Hermes that I could compare this to. I feel like looking at this, you might think that it's similar to Epsom, but it feels nothing like Epsom and the grains are a lot more round too. So I think it's most comparable to Chanel's caviar, as I mentioned, but I really, really like these. I like the fact that they have the most subtle sheen to them. It's not shiny by any means, but I think just because of that grained 
touch there is a little bit of light that bounces off of this but I really like these but unfortunately they are too small I like the fact that they were all black they also come with they also come in black with a white sole which was just way too sporty for me but I thought that if I got these I could maybe play around with a pair of socks that were in a fun color to kind of break up and spice up an all black outfit but they are too big so I, as I mentioned I got these in I want to say a 40 and a half I thought that I was smart for doing that because of how huge the Gregor loafers ran but these are way too small so I would have to get these in a 41 and a half maybe in a 42 because yeah they were just insanely tiny but if you like the way these shoes look definitely look at them I think they are a great purchase and they are unbelievably comfortable I think these are a lot more com comfortable than the Gregor loafers just because they are so light and the sole is really quite flexible and I like the fact that they are a traditional loafer but there is something a little bit more youthful and contemporary about them purely because of the sole and in case I forgot to mention those were also an online purchase I didn't buy them myself online I went into my store and they helped me order them from the website which is why I didn't know what size I should go for so those are going back my boutique does not carry this particular style so I have to go to my store and see if it's something that can be ordered or if it's something that could be transferred I really don't want these to be transferred because if they get transferred from another store I it's not like I need to get them but I would feel very uncomfortable if they didn't work out so I prefer to get these sort of things online because if they don't fit I can really easily return them if I knew exactly which size I need it would be much easier but I really have no idea I think if I could I would probably get it in a 41 and a half and also 42 so I can try both of them on and then send back the one that doesn't work because at this point I am extremely confused by Hermes's sizing but if you're going to go for the Gregor loafers definitely size down and then if you pick up the second pair that I showed you just go for your regular size because they seem to run true to size with that said let's move on to my next purchase which is really quite a small purchase but I am still very excited to finally have this because it is one of Hermes's books. In case you were not aware, Hermes, I think at this point they have three different books. The first book that I remember them launching and selling in stores was a book on some of their most iconic window displays, which came with a gilded cover. Then a few years later, they launched a book on some of their most iconic scarf prints, which I'm sure you've seen around. It was a pop-up book that had an orange cover and it was so popular that they ended up publishing it in three different languages, in English, in French, and in Mandarin, which I didn't buy. It just wasn't really my cup of tea. I didn't like the cover and I didn't like that it was a pop-up book. I appreciate the idea. I think it's really creative. I think it also makes a fun gift, but yeah, I didn't want to have it in my home because I didn't feel that the cover would go really well with my aesthetic. But this third book actually took me quite a while to hunt down because I loved the cover and I also loved that it was full of really fun little stories on Hermes's history. So it's basically a little history book, but it's done in a really fun and entertaining way. And the book is called Straight from the Horse's Mouth and it basically has just stories about some of Hermes's most iconic products, how they came about, their process of designing. As far as I can understand, I haven't actually read the book, but that's what I have gathered after flipping through this. So it has some really cute little stories. It has some fun graphics. And I think it's just a really sweet book to have on your bookshelf. If you have someone in your life who loves RMS, I think this would be a really nice and thoughtful gift that also wouldn't break the bank. So I'm really glad to finally have this in my collection. As I said, it took me ages to hunt down because it's only published in English and in French. And it's not a new new book by any means. It has been around for at least a couple of years, if not longer than that. But for some reason, I never thought to pick it up until more recently. And now it is extremely tough to find. But if your boutique ever gets it in, or if you see this pop up on the website, definitely add one to your cart because I think it's just a nice little thing to have, especially if you love Hermes as much as I do, or if you have someone in your life who's really passionate about Hermes and they would love to learn more. I think this would be a really fun way to do it. It. Next up, we have a big box here, and this is a piece that I spent 
weeks, if not month, just humming and hoeing about. It's part of a collection that I really like the look of, but I knew that once I start adding pieces to my collection from this particular range, eventually I will want to collect the entire set, which is definitely not something I need to do at this point because it took me years to build up my mosaic collection and I don't want to start all over again. But I ended up buying a piece from this range for one of you guys in my last giveaway. Then I bought this exact same piece for a friend as a Christmas gift. And I thought, you know what, if you want it so bad, just pick it up because it is actually a piece, well, not this particular piece, but I have this same piece from another collection that I, I use in my home. I have been using it for years and I genuinely think that it is one of the best pieces money can buy from Hermes. So whether you are brand new to Hermes or you're a seasoned Hermes collector, I do think, think that these pieces would add an amazing facet to your collection. They are the perfect way to infuse a little bit of Hermes into your home. There are a million and one ways of using these pieces. You can use these as trays around your home. I am currently using the other one that I have in my bathroom to display all my skincare, but I have also seen people put these on a bookshelf on a little stand. So there is a lot you can do with these and I should probably stop rambling and show you what's actually in here. So I picked up another tart platter which you have heard me talk about before. I think I'm going to do some close-ups for you because it is going to be quite hard to show especially considering how fragile these are but this is the one that I bought from the Sot Hermes collection which was the latest addition to the Hermes tableware line and it was actually specifically designed for breakfast which you can definitely tell by how lighthearted and colorful it is, especially compared to some of the other designs that Hermes has to offer. Now, if you're going to buy this, you don't necessarily have to use this for breakfast, but I think it is done just really tastefully. I just love the design. I love the colors. It is inspired by show jumping. So of course it pays tribute to the brand's equestrian heritage. You have all the iconic motifs here. So you have the horse head, you have the jumping rods, you have the saddle, you have a horseshoe with all these really cool geometric shapes, which I just really like. So I thought it would add a nice facet to my collection. I think I'm probably going to put this on my dining table or maybe on my coffee table just to, you know, as a little tray for books and for little trinkets. But of course, you can also use this in your kitchen if you bake or if you ever have people over and you really want to display a tart, it is perfect for that too. But personally, I think these just make the most amazing accessories for your home if you love Hermes as much as we do on here. So yeah, this is the latest addition to my tableware collection. I have to keep telling myself that I do not need any more pieces from this collection, but I feel like if I was to restart my tableware collection, I think this is the one that I would start with because of how, well, first of all, because I love the design. And secondly, I think they are a lot more practical than the mosaic collection because the mosaic collection is plated with precious metals. So you cannot actually put those in the dishwasher. Whereas this entire collection is both dishwasher and microwave safe. So I feel like it would be a lot easier to use and enjoy because at this point I am not buying anything that I cannot put in the dishwasher. So anyway, if you're looking for a new tableware collection, this would be a great one to look into. Or if you are just looking for a homeware piece, definitely check out the tart platters, which by the way, every single collection has a tart platter. You have a lot to choose from. Next up, let's move on to ready to wear. And you may remember that one of the ready to wear pieces that was on my wish list from Hermes was a piece of knit. You know how much I love Hermes's knits, especially their cashmere. There were two pieces that I was looking at. One of them was the baby cashmere sweater for men, which my boutique hasn't received yet. And then the other one was actually a piece from the women's line and it is their latest really chunky, heavy, but also really plush and luxurious cropped knit sweater, which they offer in a ton of different colors. I think this particular style was first introduced last fall winter. They did it in a short sleeve version and a long sleeve version. I didn't try it last year. I ended up buying a different piece of knit, but I kept thinking about it. So I figured, 
why not give it a try? Well, I did and it did not work for me. It was way too cropped and I could have gone up in size to make it just a little bit longer, but I tried it in size 40. It was so short, I could not even tuck it into my jeans and it was already quite heavy and there was a ton of fabric in the back. So I feel like if I would have gone up in size, it would have just ended up drowning me in fabric. So while it is a beautiful piece and it feels unbelievably luxurious, it's made of 100% Scottish cashmere. So it is just divine, but personally it didn't suit my body shape which there's nothing wrong with but if you're a little bit more petite this is definitely a sweater that I would suggest you look into it was really really beautifully made I love the colors that it comes in my boutique only had it in navy and off-white but there are a ton of different colors that it's offered in for this current season including black orange so you have plenty to choose from but just keep in mind that it is definitely on the cropped side so instead, I ended up buying something else, which I don't think it is a runway piece. I think it might be from the commercial line. It's again something that I had to get online and it is this denim shirt. It's not technically a shirt. It's somewhere between a jacket and a shirt, which I think is literally what it's called. I think it's called a jacket shirt, which is in denim. Now, denim is one of the biggest trends for the upcoming season. Hermes has a ton of pieces launching in denim, including bags. They are doing the Medora belt in denim, so it's not surprising that they did a denim shirt jacket for men, which I really liked. I liked the fact that it was a jacket, so it's something that I could style really casually just over a white t-shirt but I also figured that I could style it in a more formal fashion. So I'll show you exactly how I have been wearing this, which I just really like the look of. It wasn't overly expensive. I think it was just around a thousand euros. I will make sure to link the product number in the info box because I really have no idea what it's called and I'm not sure if it's going to make it into stores just because it's so reasonably priced for an Hermes jacket. It also has a single pocket on the side. So I think this is a great investment piece because this is definitely something that you would get a ton of wear out of. Now, obviously it is a denim shirt at the end of the day and for a denim shirt, it is quite expensive. But yeah, I have really been happy with it. I think it's a really cool piece that you can do a lot with and I don't personally have anything in denim from Hermes. I have never bought their jeans, which is surprising because they have been doing them for years. The reason I never bought a pair of those is because they always do the exact same style, which I don't think there's anything special about, but I'm really happy that I was finally able to find something that was a little bit more interesting from Hermes that's made of denim. Did I mention that it has a pocket? It has this slanted pocket, which is a nice added detail, but I like the fact that it featured a zip. And again, that there is so much that you can do with this. It is from the men's collection. There was only one size that I could find this in, which I cannot remember what size it is. It's not an extra small. I think this is just a small, but considering that it's a jacket that I'm going to wear over other things. And even when I style it with a more formal outfit, it's something that I probably layer. I thought it actually looks best being slightly more oversized, but I think it was a great little find from the new Hermes Spring Summer Collection. And last but not least, I wanted to share with you really quickly a new fragrance discovery just because I'm so often asked about my favorite fragrances. And this is a fragrance that really surprised me. It's not a brand that I would ever turn to for a fragrance, even though it's an iconic fragrance house, which is Guerlain, but it's not just any old Guerlain fragrance. Instead, it is one of their more exclusive scents, which this collection is called, I think it's called L'Art et la Métier. I do apologize for butchering that, but that's what it's called. And it is Guerlain's most exclusive, most high-end fragrance range, which you cannot just buy at any Guerlain counter. You have to get it either online or from one of their flagships. It's not a collection that I had ever heard of. In fact, it's something that I was put on by the founder of Fine Sense. 
you guys know I have talked about Fine Scents before. It is a London-based fragrance brand. They do some of my favorite candles. They, I think I have one right behind me here today. It's the Mayfair Affair fragrance, which is my favorite fragrance from them, my favorite candle scent, I should say. And I was telling the founder of Fine Scents how much I love honey-scented fragrances, but that I cannot really seem to find one other than Ombre Narguilé from Hermes, which is a scent that I wore for years. I still love it, but sometimes I just want something new. So she told me about this scent, which at the time was brand new. This is not a new range, but this was one of their, at the time it was their latest scent, which as the name suggests, is based in honey. So I ended up getting one of these online. She told me about this a while ago, but I had so many any fragrances that I didn't want to buy another one and I was hoping that I would be able to smell it on counter but then I found out that it's something that is quite a bit more exclusive which is definitely reflected in the price so if you don't like spending a decent amount of money on fragrances this might not be a range that you want to look into which there's nothing wrong with there are some beautiful fragrances out there that are a lot more reasonably priced this is definitely for the fragrance devotees because yeah, they are really beautiful, intense fragrances. I have been able to try a few of them because when I ordered this, I also got a few samples. And you might be wondering if you love it so much, why are you not opening it? That is because I got a couple of little samples that I have been wearing for the past week or so, and I know I love it. So I'm going to return this bottle of fragrance and I'm going to get one instead that you can personalize just because these fragrances are so expensive. They actually let you personalize the bottles free of charge so you can choose the color for the cap you can have them engraved you can put like fun little details on them which I really love the sound of I mean if you're spending so much money on a bottle of fragrance you might as well take advantage of all these fun little things so I didn't want to do it when I ordered it for the first time because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it. So I ordered it, I tried the two samples that I got and I have been loving it so much that I'm going to have a bottle personalized. Now, I'm not exactly sure how much this was. I think it was over 300 euros. It was like 330, 350 euros, something along those lines. So it's definitely not the most amount of money I have ever spent on a fragrance, but based on how intense it is, how long it lasts, and how beautiful it smells, to me, it is definitely justified. It is a really beautiful, rich, sweet, gooey honey scent, but it's not candy-like. You get the richness and the body of the honey without that sort of really young candy-like scent, and then it is also anchored. I think there is oud in here, which I love. My other favorite oud fragrance is Moon from Frederic Ma, which is a lot more expensive than even this fragrance. So it has some oud. I think there's sandalwood, there is sesame, there's also tobacco. So you get that smokiness from the tobacco and it is a beautiful scent. If you have ever worn Ombre Narguilé from Hermes, but you're looking for something that is even richer, even deeper, and a little bit longer lasting because one thing that I don't really appreciate about Umber Narguilé is how it doesn't really last on my skin. Or maybe I'm so used to it at this point that I don't smell it, but I feel like this lasts a lot longer. And if you like a warm, really beautiful, rich fragrance, this is definitely something that I would recommend looking into. And if you're going to get this, get it online, you get a sample free of charge. So you get to try it before you open it and then you can either keep the full bottle or you can have your bottle personalized, which is what I'm going to do. And then I did get two other scents from this same range, which I thought I would like. I do enjoy them, but I don't like them nearly as much as tobacco honey. So the other one is the gourmand scent, which basically just smells like hot chocolate. I think it is inspired by cocoa beans. To me, it is a really mature scent and it definitely leans more feminine. I personally don't believe in fragrances for men and women. I think it all comes down to your body chemistry and what you like. I know a lot of people would say that rose, for example, is a really feminine scent, but I actually find it really sexy on a man and I love wearing rose scents. This to me definitely leans a little bit more feminine and I have such a clear vision of who I would see wearing this. For me, this is a lady, a little bit more mature lady, someone in her 60s, 70s, someone who's looking for something really bold, 
powerful and intense, but also sophisticated. So it's inspired by cocoa beans. It is a really gourmand warm scent. It also has different spices. And then I think it's rounded out. I think the reason it is so sophisticated is because it also has a touch of rose, but it's not a sweet rose. It's more of the, that sort of floral aspect of rose because of rose is such a complex scent. You can, you know, take different facets from just one idea, but this is definitely to me a little bit more feminine. So I am personally not a fan of this, but there are definitely people out there that I think this would work really nicely on and then the other one is double vanilla which is a really nice really intense vanilla scent it's definitely more on the sweet syrupy side when it comes to vanilla and uh again to me this is a little bit more feminine i miss it did say online that it also has i think they said that it has and i might be confusing it with something else so maybe double check but i feel like it did say online that it had notes of rum and I don't get that booziness from this. The only thing that I get is that really kind of syrupy, sweet feminine vanilla, which is beautiful, but again, it's not my cup of tea. My favorite is definitely tobacco. And my friends, this is everything I had for you today. I really hope you enjoyed coming along this tiny little unboxing with me. I would love to hear from you in the comment section. What was your last luxury purchase? If there have been any noteworthy luxury purchases from the recent past, please let us know in the comment section down below. I cannot wait to hear from you. And while you're down there, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And if you're looking for a new fragrance, don't forget to check out this range from Guerlain. As I mentioned, they have a ton of different scents, not only the ones that I mentioned here. And if you're looking for a candle to add to your collection, definitely check out Fine Scents. Mayfair Fair is my personal favorite from the entire brand and it definitely if you liked the sound of tobacco honey i think you would love mayfair affair because it's definitely in a similar family it's warm it's comforting but it is also slightly boozy so anyway this is everything i had to share with you for today thank you so much for being here and watching i will see you back here with a new video really really soon